Have you ever felt stuck in your business, unsure how to grow and reach new heights? Are you curious about what it takes to turn a struggling enterprise into a thriving, successful one? Imagine if there was a simple, step-by-step -step process to help guide you on your path to business success. Well, you're in luck. There is. In this summary, you'll discover the power of the pumpkin plan, a transformative business strategy inspired by the process of growing giant pumpkins. Along the way, you'll learn how to apply these principles to your own business, making you better at identifying and nurturing your most valuable clients, cutting out distractions, and focusing on what truly matters. Ultimately, this will help you grow your business as impressively as a prize-winning pumpkin. Chapter 1 The Seven Stages of the Pumpkin Plan it may seem odd that some entrepreneurs manage to turn struggling businesses into successful ventures, while others seem to be stuck in a rut. But actually, the secret to their success could be as simple as growing a pumpkin. That's right, a pumpkin. Let's start by meeting Mike Michalowicz, the author, a once struggling entrepreneur who turned his business around with the help of his mentor, Frank. Frank advised Michael Oicks to change his business strategy if he wanted to avoid ending up as a bitter man with nothing to show for his years of hard work. In particular, Michael Oicks struggled with the if only disease, thinking that if only he could work harder, he could make his business successful. But he found that this mindset only led to more stress and burnout. Luck had it that one day, Michael Oix stumbled across a newspaper article that changed his life and his business philosophy forever. It was the story of a gigantic pumpkin and, in the article, the farmer explained how he managed to make it grow so very large. Michael Oix immediately realized that these steps could be applied to the world of business, too. This was how he came up with the pumpkin plan and its seven stages. First, you've got to plant promising seeds by identifying and leveraging your biggest strengths. Next, keep your business flourishing with constant promotion and finding new customers, just like how watering keeps the pumpkins alive. As the pumpkins grow, remove the diseased or damaged ones. That's like cutting off rotten clients in business so you can focus on the best ones. Weed out distractions and keep your eyes on the prize, just like how a mad dog weeds the pumpkin patch. When the pumpkins get bigger, identify the stronger, faster growing ones and remove the less promising ones. In business, this means focusing all your attention on your top clients. Give them what they want and replicate that success with similar clients. Lastly, watch your business grow like a giant pumpkin by following all those steps. That's what Michael Oix did, and it wasn't long before he sold his business for millions to a Fortune 500 firm. But before you can begin growing your pumpkin, you might need to take stock of where your business is at right now. And if you're struggling with growing your business, the next section is for you. Chapter 2 Revive Your Entrepreneurial Spirit in Tough Times Sometimes, entrepreneurs get seriously bogged down when their businesses start to struggle. Perhaps you too have been overwhelmed at some point during your entrepreneurial quest. It's a tough journey, and it's easy to lose sight of the dream that got you started in the first place. Have no fear. You're not alone. Virtually all entrepreneurs go through these struggles at some point or other. These struggles often consist of three stages, denial, acceptance, and giving up. If you're at stage one, you might be feeling the stress build up inside, but when someone asks how your business is doing, you say everything's great. Admitting you're struggling can be tough because you worry about how others perceive you or if it will affect future prospects and your team's faith in you. As things get worse, you might finally admit to yourself that you're struggling. This is stage two. Stress becomes a constant companion from the moment you wake up to when you go to bed. Oddly enough, you may even start to feel a sense of pride in how stressed you are. But no corrective action happens because you're too busy venting and sharing your sob stories. 
It's still your ego getting in the way. Stage three is where defeatism sets in. You throw your hands up and declare, life sucks, as if success or failure is entirely out of your control. You may feel like you're being punished and can't catch a break. At this point, most people give up and keep working, or rather, slaving away, thinking that it'll never get better. It's clear that sometimes, entrepreneurs forget their dreams and become trapped, resisting advice and thinking their businesses are too unique to systematize. But don't worry if you can relate to these three stages, there are some exercises you can do to get back on track. First, take a moment to visualize your dream and set achievable goals toward it. Remember why you started your business in the first place and let that passion fuel your motivation. Grab a pen and paper, spend 30 minutes breaking down your dream into smaller, achievable goals, and then start ticking them off. For instance, if you own a clothing store and dream of expanding to multiple locations, set a goal to open a second store within the next year. By researching potential locations, developing a business plan, and securing funding, you're well on your way to making that dream a reality. Once you've done this, set aside time every week to review the progress you're making toward your goals. 30 minutes a week will work wonders in keeping you on track and adjusting your strategy as needed. Let's say you own a fitness studio and want to increase membership by 20% in the next six months. Regular check-ins will help you stay on track, and you can make adjustments to your marketing strategy or introduce new classes to attract more members. Remember, it's normal for entrepreneurs to face tough times, but recognizing the stages and taking action can help you turn things around. By reconnecting with your dreams and setting achievable goals, you can help yourself avoid getting trapped in your business. Chapter 3 Revamp your clientele. You know that feeling when your business is going well, but you can't shake the nagging thought that something's missing? Maybe it's time to take a closer look at the clients you're working with and how you're positioning yourself in the market. Doing so will help you level up your business game. Here's the thing, it's not about having the most clients. It's about having the best clients, the ones who are the right fit for you and your business. Meet Abby. Before she met Michael Oix at a conference, she just turned down a $15,000 a month client because she was swamped with her $2,000 a month clients. Michael Oix helped her realize she was holding on to clients that were preventing her from taking on more valuable opportunities. So, take a moment to make a list of all your clients. Which ones are the best fit for your business? You don't have to get rid of everyone who isn't at the top of your list, but definitely consider letting go of those at the very bottom. It might sound harsh, but every time you clean house, you create room for new, better clients. After doing so, watch how your business transforms. Next, find your unique selling point, something that makes you stand out from the competition. Imagine you're a freelance financial planner. Your clients love that you make house calls and know them intimately. You find out that they wish you had more advice on dealing with debt and they want something different from the typical future-focused financial planning. So you decide to become a financial resuscitator, showing up at their doorstep with a strategic plan to help them navigate their financial challenges. To make this idea a reality, you start writing free articles and columns, set up a financial resuscitation day, and even get a van with your new logo painted on it. People love your unique service and start referring to you as the financial resuscitator instead of just another financial planning guy. Before you know it, you're expanding your business and even considering a franchise. At the end of the day, remember that business isn't a popularity contest. Focus on having the best clients and finding your unique selling point. When you do that, you'll see your business thrive and, who knows, you might even discover a whole new direction to take it in. Chapter 4 The Power of the Organizational Chart Have you ever thought about how your company's structure impacts its overall success? 
Or perhaps you're struggling to figure out who's responsible for what and how different roles and departments work together. Well, it could be that you need to revisit your organizational chart and, by doing so, transform your business. First, let's quickly go over what an organizational chart is. In simple terms, it's a visual representation of your company's structure, showing the hierarchy of roles and responsibilities and how they all fit together. So why is an organizational chart crucial for every business? It helps you understand how your company functions, who's responsible for what, and how different roles and departments communicate and collaborate. This clarity is vital for streamlining operations and fostering teamwork. Luke runs a small business and was struggling to handle the workload. Michael Oix sat down with him and they compared Luke's ideal organizational chart with his current one. It turned out that one of his project managers was unproductive and distracting, while his office manager was actually capable of taking on some project management tasks. By letting go of the deadweight project manager, Luke's office manager could handle the workload and the business became more efficient. So, what can you take away from Luke's story? First off, start by creating your ideal organizational chart. Think about the roles and responsibilities that would best serve your top clients. Once you've visualized the perfect structure, start plugging your current staff into the roles they should be filling. You might find that some people are wearing too many hats and others might not fit into your ideal organizational chart at all. Be open to making changes for the betterment of your business. Next up, don't be afraid to review your expenses and cut those that don't serve your top clients. For example, if you've just let go of some clients or eliminated certain services, get rid of the related expenses, such as pricey software or part-time staff. Focus on expenses that'll help you serve your top clients better. Imagine you're a member of a rock band and trying to grow your fan base. By applying these principles, you could create exclusive content for your most dedicated fans, such as behind the scenes videos, live tweeting from studio sessions, or embedding secret passwords in your songs for access to special material. By catering to your top fans, you'll create more buzz, attract new followers, and grow your business, or in this case, your band. Chapter 5. The Three Questions Technique. Do you often find yourself wondering how you can equip your team to deal with all the curveballs that the business world throws at them? You might think it's impossible, but there's actually a pretty effective framework that might change the way you think about decision making in your company. It's called the Three Questions Technique, and it can help your staff think like you and act appropriately in unexpected circumstances. It's like cloning yourself, but way less creepy. The questions go like this. First, does this decision better serve our top clients? Second, does this decision improve or maintain our area of innovation or, in other words, the unique element that distinguishes us from our competitors? And third, does this decision grow or maintain our profitability? By asking these questions, your employees will be empowered to make decisions that align with your company's best interests. And if they can answer yes to all three questions, they know they're on the right track. Imagine that you've finally made your lifelong dream come true and opened a restaurant. You're known for your culinary artistry and specialize in gourmet comfort food the kind grandma used to whip up. But instead of being the talk of the town, you're struggling to compete with 10 other restaurants in just a two-block radius. You're working crazy hours and barely scraping by. So what do you do? You start by identifying your top customers. In this case, you decide to focus on professional clients, so you change your hours, get rid of the kids' menu, and ban strollers. You also cater to the specific needs of your top clients, like Bill and Steve, who wish your restaurant was a cell phone-free zone. By applying the three questions, you make decisions that better serve these clients, improve your unique offering, and grow your profitability. And just like that, 
You've turned your struggling restaurant into a go-to spot for professionals all thanks to the power of the three questions. So how can you put this into action? First, make sure your employees know who your top clients are and why they matter. Teach them about your area of innovation and how it sets you apart from competitors. And finally, help them understand how your business makes money. Second, stick to the three questions like glue. When employees come to you for guidance, walk them through the questions to ensure they're making the right call. It might not be perfect for every situation, but it's a solid foundation to build on. And finally, consider posting the three questions somewhere visible so that employees see it regularly. That way, they won't always have to come to you for guidance in the future. All in all, the three questions are a game changer for empowering you and your team to handle the unpredictable world of business. Start using them today and watch your employees become decision-making superstars. Final Summary The Pumpkin Plan is a business strategy inspired by growing gigantic pumpkins. It's got seven stages, starting with planting promising seeds, identifying your strengths, and moving on to constantly promoting your business. As your business grows, get rid of the bad clients like rotten pumpkins and focus on the best ones. Keep distractions at bay and concentrate on top clients, giving them what they want and replicating success with similar clients. You've also discovered that entrepreneurs go through struggles like denial, acceptance, and giving up. But by visualizing your dream, setting achievable goals, and checking progress regularly, you can avoid getting trapped. Focus on having the best clients instead of the most clients and find your unique selling point to stand out from competitors. Organizational charts are essential to streamline operations and foster teamwork. Create an ideal chart, plug in your current staff, and make changes to improve your business. Additionally, consider the three questions technique to empower your staff in decision making. By following these strategies, you'll see your business thrive like a giant pumpkin. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.